to you, this might sound totally whack and like a scam. You might think I'm off my rocker or just another YouTuber who's lost his way and resorted to clickbait. This might actually be the one time though that the phrase too good to be true is not accurate. I'm gonna show you how to never change your oil again and how toilet paper will make your vehicle more eco-friendly and last even longer. Before any of you who thinks they know what they're talking about and chimes in saying toilet paper will break down and clog your oil, the truth is oil actually makes the toilet paper stronger. Toilet paper is designed to break down in water, not oil. Today we're talking about the Franz oil filter. Welcome to Dylan's Garage. My knowledge of the Franz filter goes way back to my childhood, hearing my pops talk about it. He's always had this shiny can under the hood of every vehicle he's owned. He told me stories of how he used to take his parents' old dirty oil and pour it into his cars and would basically make the oil new again. I actually filmed a video about this testing the concept on my K20, so stay tuned for that video release. Fast forward 30 years, I'm now ready to do a Franz filter install for the first time myself. My K20 already has it, but that's because I bought that truck from my pops a few years ago he's regretting that one still uh, never sell a square now Franz has been around forever turns out Franz himself was somewhat of a genius because he discovered that toilet paper is actually an amazing oil filter it filters down to two microns which is actually cleaner than when the oil is new but time happens and Franz filter was eventually acquired by hotshot secret and i had a lengthy talk with one of the pros over there and they re-educated me on some old thoughts while my dad has a long history of using standard oil and topping it off after each filter change the correct thing to do is to use the full PAO synthetic oil and continue to use their TBN booster to help top it off, replenish the detergents, and help regulate the acidity of the oil as it ages. The full PAO synthetic is important because it won't break down over time like the standard oil will. That said, my dad swears by the standard oil and says he's never had issues. I believe him, but we're trying to be proper right now. Now! Let me show you how I installed the Franz filter on my 4th gen 4Runner. It's an 06 and I used the Universal kit from Hotshot Secret. Universal meaning you can use it on basically any vehicle as long as you follow the same concepts of, of my install. This instructional will help you work through the install on your own vehicle. Hotshot Secret does sell some vehicle specific kits, so if you have a popular full-size rig, they probably have a plug-and-play kit for you. I do plan to make a video of the Gasoline Extreme fuel system cleaner, but that's for another time. Inside the kit is the filter housing with the toilet paper pre-installed. I always like to pull things apart though and familiarize myself with how things go together. This strap ring tensioner is what clamps the can to the mount and seals it against the o-ring. Make sure your o-ring is flat all the way around before installation. When I pulled the can off it kind of twisted a little bit. Just make sure it's flat. First thing to do is find a good spot for the filter. You can mount it any way, anywhere. I like the idea of putting it somewhere up top though for easy access and so I can look at it every time I pop the hood. Your vehicle might have less room and require mounting it upside down or sideways underneath. Next to my power steering reservoir seems to be a good spot for me. It clears the hood and I don't plan to put anything else there. My wiper reservoir is under the sheet metal though so I pulled a few screws to pull that reservoir away down below so I don't drill into it. After picking a spot, I marked the steel with a marker because that's what markers do is mark things up leaving marks that came from the marker and drilled a quarter inch hole to accommodate the quarter 20 bolt that I ran through it. I used a super long drill bit because I didn't feel like wiggling my drill down in there. Before bolting the mount on, spray a little paint to prevent rust around the drilled hole. I ran my bolts from underneath to help prevent clearance issues with my wiper reservoir that mounts right below that. Lock nuts are a good idea here too. I pulled the engine cover off so I had more room to work with. The inlet valve on the filter must be fed by a pressure source. So this oil pressure sensor is a good spot to tap into the system. Now the kit does not come with a BSPT fitting which is the European oh, British standard thread. So you have a couple options. My recommendation is to pick up a eighth inch BSPT to NPT adapter so you can use the included T fitting. That would make it plug and play. What I did should be done very cautiously if you're new to this stuff and it's definitely not the number one recommendation but it's what I did and it worked. So the eighth inch 
BSPT and 8th inch NPT are so close to the same thread that you can actually thread the male sensor into the female NPT. But to get the NPT male to thread into the OEM threads on the housing that's on the engine, you need to re-tap those threads if you're not using an adapter. And that's exactly what I did. I found a kit at Harbor Freight that includes the 8th inch NPT tap in a tap and die set. If you leave the housing bolted to the block like I did, it's important to use some grease to capture any shavings you create while tapping. Grease works great for this. Just be sure to clean and apply new grease frequently to keep those shavings under control. Now you can assemble the adapter with the sensor on top and an angled fitting for the hose. I used the included thread sealer, but next time would probably use Teflon tape to really seal it extra good. Be sure to use a wrench on the T-fitting also to make sure you're not stressing the other threads when you tighten things down. For the return line, I removed the oil fill neck and tapped into it with the same NPT tap that I used earlier. A better and stronger way to do this would be to weld on a female thread fitting, but my guess is most people watching this don't weld aluminum. If you do, that's awesome. I'm editing this video months after the install and I've had no issues with the return fitting on the fill neck. So sounds like it's fine, at least on my vehicle. Now prep the in and out ports as needed for your application. I used the 90 degree fittings to clear the sheet metal under the filter. If you put the mount on the side with the filter facing up or down, you probably don't need these uh, 90 degree fittings, but just depends on your application. Again, be sure to use sealer on all the threads. Now the kit comes with one long hose to cut into two pieces. To figure out the correct hose length, I installed both ends of the hose to the filter, tightened them down with included hose clamps, then bolted on the filter and ran the hose towards the fittings. It's super important to make sure you keep track of which hose was in versus out on the bottom of that filter. And I know from experience because I was going too fast and I ran out of time, it's getting dark, and I didn't pay attention and I cut the wrong side. So the next day I had to go back and pull the fittings and swap sides to get the, the in and out going to the right spots. The in comes from that pressure line where we tapped in by the sensor. The out is what goes to the oil fill neck. When I'm doing electrical on vehicles, I like to leave a service loop of extra wire that I can work with later if needed. These hoses though are one thing I like to cut perfect length without pulling them tight. I use the curves and the bends in my routing to give some natural relief points. With the filter and hoses installed, you can push the included loom on to protect the lines. Cut it to length and zip tie the hoses to secure locations to prevent any unwanted movement. Now you can drain your oil and fill the system with your high quality full PAO synthetic oil from Hotshot Secrets. <laughs> Be sure to run the engine and check for full oil again as you'll need just a little more than usual to fill up to accommodate for that extra hose and the filter. Look at the back of the TBN bottle to determine when you need to give it another boost. With the filter installed and the system full, you can officially never do an oil change again. There is one more step though, to do this actually correct. You'll wanna order the oil analysis kit from Hotshot Secrets. It comes with return packaging, an oil catch canister, an info sheet that helps explain what the analysis means, and an info card where you fill out all your information so they know exactly what recommendations to give based on your vehicle. When you go to get your oil sample, if you're pulling it from the oil pan, you'll want to let a little oil drain out first so you don't get just what has been settling at the bottom. Then fill your catch can about half. I got a little more than that, but that's totally fine. Then plug up your oil again and top it off with the amount that you just took out. Now I admit I've waited a little too long before replacing my France filter. So my oil's a little darker than it should be, but it'll clean right up with a new filter. Then make sure your little catch can is nice and tight before you wrap it up with your info sheet and pack it up to ship it away. Then Hotshot Secret will send you an email with your analysis and a recommendation for your vehicle. After you receive that analysis, you'll want to follow their recommendations, and when you do change the filter, the TBN booster should be enough to replenish your oil. But if your engine's burning any oil, you'll want to make sure you check that dipstick and top it off with more oil as needed. As always, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or DM me on Instagram. Thank you all so much for watching. See you on the next one.